it doesn't have to be this way. I want you to step back for a moment, actually stop what you're doing and focus on this alone for a while. And I mean really focus. Stop everything else. I'm aware that we can multitask, but this also divides our attention. So the question I like to ask is who makes the rules? And my answer immediately is that we don't truly know. Now, it seems like a very basic question, but once you ask it to yourself and uh, you start looking for answers, you'll begin an amazing journey of discovery, searching for a truth. Is this a truth that we really seek, aside from the philosophical questions about where we came from, our purpose and our destination? And I tend to argue that there's no absolute truth, but I do believe there is what I consider the fact of a matter and about who it is that claims authority over us. We have a monarchy in the UK, for example, but it's not as if our Queen gets up each day and gives orders. And I say our Queen, meaning the royal we, but not me. So in general terms, it seems that those with political and military power rule over those armed with only ideologies who sit back claiming that peaceful protest is going to make change. How would you know if you were peaceful if there was no conflict? There seems to exist an opposite for everything. If there wasn't, wouldn't we just be? To assume that you're peaceful... Would be, assume, would be to assume that there are people who are not so. There has to be a comparison. We measure ourselves against the things that we observe. And I can't help but hold the view that our differences are magnified, then we're pushed to express our differences via conflict rather than by sharing and accepting these differences. And it's these refusals to accept each other on which those that maintain authority over us create our division. And that leaves us in a state of confusion as we conflate the messages we're, that we're indoctrinated with by transmission of popular media, which is controlled by the ruling class who serve those who claim authority over us. But who are they? So, it's important to remember that authority is assumed, coerced or taken. We're born into a system of control which makes it uh, difficult for us to um, see what we're a part of. We agree to almost everything by acquiescence. And we're born into a system of indentured servitude and within a short time we soon come to believe that everything is just that way because that's the way things are. We're educated that way and discouraged from asking questions. And the children that do ask questions or refuse to comply are given bad reports in their schooling years both to their parents and also um, as uh, a recording into the school measurement system which can be called at any time by the state or system that uh, monitor us. And that means that uh, your parents are informed that you're not doing so well at school at learning the system and that the parents should enforce more of what they were told is true into their little heads. And if you are really different, and by that I mean anything from your way of thinking, your attire, the way you wear your hair, or any trivial way that doesn't conform, the system will deem that you're very likely to have some form of mental health issue. And I'm taken aback at the amount of people who lay claim to being or having OCD, ADHD, dyslexia, anxiety issues, intolerance to food and a host of other conditions that have um, surfaced in recent years. And although I don't deny that um, such conditions actually exist and that our food supply is totally contaminated, I truly think the majority simply have communicable internet disease, a phrase of mine. And that is to say that people became aware and caught the symptoms. How many times does a bright child thinking outside of the box have to be told that they're a dreamer by teachers and by adults that have been misinformed then subdued by the system before them? Dare to dream, it's how we evolve. Nobody seems to pay mind to the fact that dreamers built and invented the very things that are part of our progress, whether they're simply ideas alone or physical constructions and inventions. And I'm not talking about the, just simply the European way of doing things because we've got this um, miseducation that um, the Europeans built the way forward. And when you think hard about it, you have to understand there's a whole world of mixed cultures out there, even though we're all one as human beings. And how can the mindset of one central part of the world suffice for everybody? It's wrong, that's taken by force. And we mustn't forget the contributions by artists and those who study the humanities. We're conditioned to dream within the confines of the reality created by the system that controls us, by those that claim to have authority over us. And it doesn't have to be this way. School teaches us as children that there's three worlds, for instance, the first world, second world, and third world, and they try to inform us of different races. In fact, there's only one human race. And although uh, there's one race, we have cultural differences, and that's it. Western education indoctrinates us with the idea that each race has a specific role to play as dominant and subservient, intellectually superior, or even mystical in the East. And we're not taught of the many other possibilities that may be, and of the true reality meaning that there is no truth, but there is a whole other reality outside and within our current way of thinking. 
Young minds are filled with religious and scientific conflict, each with their own notions of our origins. Dinosaurs, cavemen, were educated of a backwards Africa and were consistently told of planets and other astronomical wonders. And they're pushed onto us with such regularity that it leaves me thinking there's an agenda and that they're all <laughs> preposterous claims. We're defined as the boy and the girl, indo indoctrinated with each of their respective roles. We're taught there are black people and white people and yellow people, then indoctrinated with their uh, prospective roles. We're taught who and what we must love and who our enemies are, and we give credence to their claims, concluding that they must be telling the truth as they come from authority. And soon the majority become obedient little soldiers, believing that this is how our world actually is, when the truth is, that is how we think our world is. This is how we think our world is. Our world needn't be any bigger than our local communities. If we paid heed to that, we would thrive, even with taxation. <laughs> so, there's so much more to be seen and done, locally and far afield. However, many find a place of comfort fitting into the system where they're not seen and heard, simply going through the motions, paying taxes, neglecting to think beyond what they were taught. And it doesn't have to be this way. So what is there to know? Well, simply everything and anything. And I think it's a shame that having such a miseducation means that when I make the claim that you have become narrow-minded, it will be difficult for you to take it bored and it will be met with denial. And the term that is being banded about is cognitive dissonance. Sometimes in life we face uncomfortable contradictions and they can even cause anxiety depending on how severe the contradiction is or the significance of those thoughts or values and what they mean to you. So the resulting discomfort or tension that we experience as a result of that contradiction is called cognitive dissonance. And the theory of cognitive dissonance was developed in 1957 by a social psychologist named Leon Festinger and it's become quite influential in modern psychology. And the theory is based on the idea that humans want all of our actions and beliefs to have consistency. Whenever uh, there arises an inconsistency, such as the introduction of a contradictory belief, a discomfort occurs, and this is cognitive dissonance. The symptoms can include anxiety, embarrassment, shame, regret, stress, and even negative self-worth. On Facebook and many social media sites, I've seen a great deal of anger coming from people that feel this discomfort, and they lash out negatively when their beliefs are challenged, as they have no understanding of the condition or how to retain a positive mental attitude. Yet nobody's at fault, after all. We're all just people. However, it doesn't have to be this way. So I'll end by saying, I don't have a solution, but I do have an idea. And I put this forward as an abstraction that has application to many things. All systems depend on flow. They must have movement to thrive. Anything that remains static perishes, either by its own doing or by the very other things moving against it. There has to be fluidity for the system to function. It's impossible to build in a foul cell for all eventualities should a system not perform as expected, but the ability to adapt should be inherent in that system. And this is why we're here. We are the survivors. And as an aside, I'll be covering why we must celebrate life in a future show. So if we start changing the flow of a system, we can start making significant changes. We don't have to break anything or fight. It's their system. Let it be. We have to simply redirect our energies, and the main energies being in the form of spending, consumerism, our labour and loyalties. It really is that simple. By redirecting the flow, we affect the system. We don't have to play their game. It really is that simple. And we can use these simple principles in almost any other area that requires change. It really doesn't have to be this way. Thanks for listening. I'm the OG, OBG. Look after yourself. Cause you've been so Sitting down, don't want to play